Okay guys, uh, hi again. In today's video, we're going to be uh, configuring uh, Cisco Ether Channel Layer 2. And uh, hopefully you'll find it uh, informative. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and let's get it started. As we see in this topology, we have uh, a core 1 and core 2 again and uh, the configuration between these uh, core, core 1 and core 2 we have um, we have gig 1 and gig 2 on each end to be configured uh, on ether channel layer 2 but at the moment a uh, gig 2 on core 2 as you see it beneath here it shows orange that means it's in standby so it is not active so we're going to change that so what happened is basically stp spanning tree goes on and uh, and blocks uh, the extra link in the sense the redundancy is there but it will only be used uh, if uh, one of the link goes down for example between core one and core two if uh, Gig zero, gig zero one goes down. Gig uh, gig two will kick in, and it will resume until we figure out why is gig uh, gig one down. So at the moment, gig uh, gig two is down. So uh, that is due to STP to avoid loops, while redundancy is used to keep the network operational. We will use the, these links to make one logical, um, we're going to use these two links, the gig 2 and gig 2 on each side, gig 1 and 2 on each side, uh, to make one logical um, link. Ether channel will remove the block and double uh, the speed between the two core switches. So there won't be just single, going to be a pipe right there. For example, if also it's going to be adding uh, extra speed. For example, if uh, the gig is at the moment 10 gig, more likely this is a 10 gig cable connection. And if it is 10, if we utilize the second one, it's going to be 2 gig. So now we will have, a, it will become a one big pipe. So in this, uh, this configuration, once again, we will be configuring uh, layer 2. You could add more links to them. For example, you can have a gig one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Uh, that depends on your needs and uh, if your switch supports it. It's doable, but in this example, we will just go on and uh, use the two, and we could uh, aggregate aggregate these links. So let's go and uh, verify a few things. Let's go to core one and verify. Um, the trunk and uh, make sure there is a trunk uh, going on between these switches just to make sure everything is looking good there's no existing trouble so we're gonna go on and give the command show interface trunk and gonna give us the good information Let's actually make it a little bit bigger right now between uh, gig one and gig two while we are sitting on core one as we see it, there is trunking, and if you remember, if you have watched my previous video, I usually put on the native VLAN 99, and we have native VLAN 99, and it is on, on core 1, gig 1 and 2 is trunking, and allowed uh, VLANs are all of these as listed, and etc. Anyways, the side... Uh, at least the trunking looks good. So let's go on and say show VLAN. Taking a VLAN, how many VLANs we have, etc. You see it right there, okay. And one more thing we need to verify is show spanning tree. Show spanning tree, we're going to take a look and see what is the status on uh, between, especially between these uh, switches. As you, as you see it, while we are sitting on core one, we see the gig one and gig two is in forwarding state. So that means nothing is being blocked. So these two are in forwarding state. So we are good right there. And um, and they're designated indeed, forwarding designated as well. 
Let's look in there. Let's go to core 2 and verify the same things as we did on core 1. Let us go and enable show interface trunk. Show interface trunk. Yes, it is trunking. As we see it right there. Yes, core 2 is also trunking on uh, gig this and this. And also this if one is coming between core 1 to core to switch to distribution and core uh, 2 to this distribution so nothing to worry about you're looking good right there okay so trunking right there to the switch 1 switch 2 and trunking to the other side on uh, gig, gig 2 on gig 2 and uh, gig 1 and gig 2 sorry and uh, still of course the VLAN uh, native VLAN should be 99 on both sides, otherwise we will get native VLAN mismatch. And please remember what is being uh, what's being uh, trunk right now. All of these VLANs, as we see it, all of those. So we are taking a look at show VLANs. If you take a look at show VLAN, all of those VLANs which are being advertised are listed right there as well. Let's go and take a look at uh, show spanning tree. Show spanning tree, look in there, that one is being blocked. Anyways, yes, it's going to throw out alternative. Anyways, let's go and change a few things so we can have a nice e channel configure on this device. So I'll get started. Uh, let's start with core one. Okay, guys, one more time, we're going to verify the spanning tree on uh, core two because right there, as we see it. Uh, Giggle 2 is uh, being blocked. Well, that is because spanning tree is blocking it. But we're gonna just uh, we're just gonna verify. Oops, we're just gonna verify it. Uh, looking in there, looking gig 2 is blocked because spanning tree does that the best. Yes, redundancy is there, but I'd like to block it to avoid loop. Otherwise, we will get. Uh, so much flood and network and advertisement etc just because if that is allowed so it's good to have it block bottom line you can have another um, another video on uh, spanning tree more likely next week I'll explain it in details anyways let's go and change this and get uh, and get uh, spanning and get the ether channel layer 2 configured Okay, we're gonna go on and configure ether channel on um, core two first, and then you will do the same on core one. Actually, ether channel since already we have already configured VTP, we already configure uh, trunking. We are good to go. So just a few lines of configuration, and we should set up the the ether channel. Let's go and get both interfaces in one shot. So we're going to say interface, range, gig, 0, 1 through 2. Okay, 1 through 2. We're going to create a channel, channel group. It doesn't populate automatically after I type the whole thing. Let's call it group 10, okay, mode active. If you, if you look at, take a look at the mode, it's going to give you so many choices. How, what mode? Do you want to have it active or do you want to have it passive? Do you want to have it desirable? My favorite is indeed desirable, but let's go on and put on active. Uh, we're going to put on active on... We're going to put it desirable on this end, and we're going to put on active on that other end. So there we go. It has been configured on this end. We will repeat the same thing on core one. Let's exit this. Exit. Write it. Let's go to core one and do the same. Okay, I see. We see that um, Core 2 has been configured. It was just a couple of commands we type in. It's configured. Let's go and configure um, 
core one let's go to core one and uh, move it a little bit down we are sitting right now on core one so we're going to go to that interface and configure it config t interface uh, gig interface range gig zeros one two two okay we got that and uh, we're just going to create a channel group and say channel group channel group um, channel group 10 because it has to match with the other end we're going to make this uh, mode active because that one is desirable anyways it's been configured exit exit there we go okay as we see it, there's uh, activity happening on on core one and core two so we are waiting till these lights become green when they become green that means the configuration has been successful but remember while we're waiting for that please remember the v2p configuration on this is as such as below and remember these two switches are already configured for trunking if you want to know how to configure these for trunking please watch my video i've previously uploaded video already it's on trunking and make sure you do it if you remember we had uh, gig 2 it was dead it was suspended it was blocked by stp but now it is up and running so we have total of um, let's say 20 gig of bandwidth right there and uh, later we can concept we can configure a lot of other stuff for load balancing and etc thank you for watching this video and i hope you found it informative and i promise to upload more advanced videos we will configure more stuff together if you like this video please do subscribe and um, please uh, like our videos and subscribe to the channel and feel free to comment and i would love to hear from you thank you so much have a wonderful day